Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Now, I gotta ask you guys about Pacquiao Jeff Horn, because I remember I interviewed you beforehand, and many people weren't familiar with Jeff Horn. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta look at him in there with a the legend like Pacquiao. What would you think of it? Who won, first of all? What do I think about the Hornet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, did Pacquiao get stung? Did you have Pacquiao winning? I think Pacquiao that? really looked like really bad. You know, he did not look like himself at all, but I still think that he did enough to win the fight by a good margin. Like, I think he won the fight. Okay. I think he won the fight even on his worst night against Jeff Horn. You know what I mean? But the fact that he looked so bad, a lot of people, and Jeff brought so much heart to the table, and, you know, he did have a lot of heart, and he fought his heart out because he knew that was his opportunity. And the fact that he did that and Pacquiao didn't look good, people are like, oh, whatever. You know, he, he lost. He yeah. lost, you know. But if, if that would have been a prime Pacquiao, then everyone, everyone is saying he got robbed, you know, but, like, a lot of people, it surprised me how a lot of people are actually giving Jeff Horn full credit for that, you know. I don't think that he really deserves full credit for beating Manny Pacquiao because I think he really lost. But he did, you know, people like to see that heart, you know. But it, it's kind of like you see he comes back and shows a lot of heart in that fight and gets totally, you know, a gift. But when Andre Ward comes back from behind, gets – so much closer of a fight, you know what I mean? A controversial decision. Everyone's like, oh, screw him. You know what I mean? But like... That's a good point. You know, but yeah, with Jeff Horn, Horn, it's like, oh, he had so much heart. Look what he brought to the table. Look how, you know what I mean? But that's another, that's another topic. But um, I think that Jeff Horn's going to get absolutely annihilated. He better not get in there with like Errol Spence and Keith. Bro, it's going to be so <laughs> bad. Like, oh my goodness. I want him for my debut, to be honest. I want Jeff Horn. Oh, you want to fight? Debut. Yeah. <laughs> We've been talking about that. Let me know. Hey, what? Let me know. I'll give it. I'll give it to you, man. Like you'll fight Jeff Horn. Yeah. You gonna get that. stung up? I would get. <laughs> Tell him I'll fight the fight. Hornet. <laughs> <laughs> you fight somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs okay, to take so a, take a break. Take a you, break. Said, you said Errol Spence and Keith Thurman would annihilate him. What? What makes you believe that? Like, because, in their style. What do they do that makes you believe I mean, that? they don't really have to do much. They just have to show up that night. You know what I mean? Like, it's, like, not to really, like, I mean, I love the fact that Jeff Horn has a big heart, but, like, they don't really have to. Any, you know, high pedigree fighter in the welterweight division is going to beat him. I mean, I think Chris Algieri would beat him, you know. So. What about Kel Brook? Yeah, and I think it would be a good fight for Kel Brook to fight right now, you know, coming off a loss, you know, get about. What about there's him. a guy you sparred that I thought it would be a good fight, Mir Khan versus. Yeah, that'd be a good. I think that'd be a good fight. You know, and it'd be, I th he would kill Jeff Horn. You know, he would kill Jeff Horn, but it'd be a good fight for Khan. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. He, he like you know to for it'd be a big fight because whoever Jeff fights at this point, people are going to be watching. Yeah, he's a know, champion he's now. He's a so. champion, so it's a good fight to maybe even Andre Berto. I remember seeing Andre Berto said, I want that on his Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. I seen that. Every, I seen, you know, it's crazy. Why do you think everyone's calling him out? Because I seen Danny Garcia. Because he's food. Errol Spence and said like, he was food. Yeah, like Errol Spence said, you know, he's got a belt. At that point, everybody wants you, especially because it's easy. I'm sorry, you know, but it's, it's an easy belt to, to pick up, you know, in the welterweight division. So Errol Spence versus Horn, you give Horn no shot? Yeah. <laughs> okay, what about Terrence Crawford? Let's say he unifies and becomes undisputed mm -hmm. and he moves up. I heard that's something top rank might be interested in making. Terrence Crawford versus Jeff Horn. Oh, uh, yeah. Terrence Crawford would just totally <laughs> kill him. Like, Jeff oh. Horn ain't beat nobody, right? Jeff Horn's not, <laughs> <laughs> not beat nobody. It's bad. So, Jeff Horn, what do you, okay, what do you think of the Pacquiao fight? Who would you I, have winning? I had Pacquiao winning, but like Joey said, I feel like he didn't look, you know, look as good. But Jeff Horn is really in a bad. I mean, he in a good position, you know. For his, you know, he got the bell and all that. But right now, everybody, all the strikes coming for him. So, is he the yeah. best fighter from Australia? <laughs> I, it, it ain't no fighters in Australia, so probably. <laughs> yeah, I say. Even Joey Spencer wants him. So yeah, like everybody <laughs> wants Jeff Horn. Everybody Man, wants Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn right now is in a bad position. Okay, so why is he in a bad position? Because if you fight anybody like Earl Spence, you know it's. 
especially Earl's. Please don't fight your face. <laughs> <laughs> please don't. You said please don't. If you, fight, I mean, if Jeff Horn fight Earl Spence, he called him out though. Jeff Horn did. Jeff Horn called out Earl and uh, Keith Thurman. And Mayweather. Well, I'm not trying to. Say, I, I guess. So uh, yeah, he did. He did call him out. Just in his head. Oh, please. I'm not trying to see no Mayweather fight. I spot, have. Though. If you fight Keith Thurman or Earl Spence, I got him getting stopped before five. Before three, Be before five, because he's tough. You know, you got a head. You know, Pacquiao he rocked the hurdle. He him. rocked him, but like Pacquiao couldn't. He looked so. And he didn't look bad. Because so. Pacquiao's timing wasn't there to even be able to finish. Okay, that. as fighters, one thing I noticed personally, some people said it was dirty. My thing is, if it's if it's dirty in there, you and the ref ain't doing nothing, you got the fight on. So what would you guys do to no, to neutralize a guy who's durable, tough, <clears throat> maybe using his head, just like. Awkward, you know what I'm saying? Jeff Horn was real awkward. There's yeah. cuts and blood and stuff. How would you, how do you nullify that? Um, if they being dirty on purpose, you know, I'm I was always told to get it back, you know. But I would say if he coming in with his head, I I would probably box Horn more, you know, on the back foot because Horn was coming straight forward and all that. But yeah, if he doing on pur if 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 somebody is filing on purpose and a ref not doing nothing about it, I was always told to get it back. So. That's so you, right. oh, so you do about like the heads, Jeff Horn? Yeah, just he was coming in rugged and I know cut. What, uh, like, I think Floyd set a good standard for what to do, you know, because everybody tried to what use fight? his head. Every fight, you know, like Victor Ortiz, Ricky Hatton, oh, Miguel, not Miguel Cotto, really, but um, guys who might not really definitely. try to get in. And um, that's what, and there's such a double standard because everybody said, you know, this is one of the things they said about Floyd, but. If they tried that, then Floyd would put the elbow in his face. You know what I mean? If from the Philly position, mm. if they're trying to use their head, then they're gonna catch an elbow right, you know, in the mouth. And that's a good way to make, cause guys don't like that. You know what I mean? They're gonna, they're gonna stop trying to use their heads if every time they put their head in your chin, they're taking elbows and their eyes are swelling and stuff. So I think that's what I would do. But like Leon, told him bows. Like Leon said, if they hit, you know, I believe that if if you, they get a clean shot, you know, maybe below the belt, then. That's the thing about Kovalev. That's the thing about like Kovalev. This is what I say, and that's what any you know coach that I've heard talk about the fight. If you're getting hit low, then why are you looking at the ref to do so? If the ref doesn't first, you look at the ref. But if the ref doesn't do you anything about it, I mean, no, no, no. First, you see if the ref is gonna do something about it. If the ref doesn't do anything about it, in my mind, I've got a free low blow because. Think about it this way, if you get hit low, you, that does affect you. Or if you get hit behind the head and you've got, you know, some neurological, you know, like, because that messes with you, you know. For, it could mess with you for the rest of the fight. I've heard Bernard Hopkins talk about fights where he got hit behind the head and he's like, man, I was messed up. Like, the rest of the fight, I was seeing two of them and stuff like that. Well, yeah. if they can get that off on you, make sure you get it back so that it's an even playing field again. And also, psychologically for yourself, he hit me low, okay, you're going to get that back. That's the way I live by every sparring session, every anything. If you hit me low, I'm going to hit you low back. You know what I mean? And if I accidentally hit somebody low, I'm expecting something to come back. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's how you have to think. So. It, oh, and my pops always told me if I get hit, but it's something that I did wrong. You know? He always said I should have my arms, like, hands crossed, or if I jab, throw a jab on this side or throw a right hand on that side and stay on my back foot so it avoid getting, you know. You tall like, though, so you, you better not be getting headbutt yeah, too nah. much. Yeah, you're too nah. low if you get headbutt. So my pops always say it's, it's either, it's halfway my fault if I get headbutt. Yeah, that makes sense. Be able to avoid it. Now we talked about this off camera. What did Pacquiao do wrong? Like using what Pacquiao does, how did he make the fight harder than he needed to be, or than it needed to be? Like you said before, he over, I mean, oh, no, he overlooked him. He, um, Started off too slow. He started off real slow. You know what I'm saying? Was behind the cards. I feel like early, the early part of the fight, he was a little bit behind. But I feel like he did enough to win. But you know, just the, the judges didn't. What'd you see, Kel? You know, Pacquiao's one of my all-time. Yeah, fighters. you told me. <laughs> but yeah, I thought he lost that fight. Oh, you had him losing. Okay. Yeah. First person. <laughs> <laughs> From the, the beginning of the fight. He was really, he was, he started off too slow. He wasn't winning those rounds. But at the end, he started to pick it up. Yeah. But it was already too late. Okay, so you had Jeff, so we had Jeff. Two, two Pacquiao's and then one Jeff they Horn had, winner. I had an uh, investigation on that fight, didn't it? Yeah, they rescored it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
what what could Pacquiao have done differently to to make it a, a smoother night? I think that um, something maybe happened in training camp, not happened in training camp, but like I think that was something that he had to, like he said, I think he overlooked them. So I think in training camp, maybe he didn't do the same things or work as hard maybe because his timing really just didn't seem there. Like in, I don't think a lot of people said he just got old, but really I think it was more motivation because when he went in there, he was smiling. He didn't really look like he really cared to even be in there. And, and he, he probably went, thought it was going to be some easy also, work. Also heard, I also heard that they was, uh, that they had it fixed to where Pacquiao loses fight and then get a rematch, win that fight, then get another fight so he can avoid fighting the other big dogs in that weight class and have an easy fight, you know, fighting somebody with a belt now, you know, like that. I've heard that before. It's possible. I mean, who, okay, I'm going to name some, since you said that, I'm going to name some people and tell me, let's say the Jeff Horn fight never happened. Yeah. Pacquiao versus Errol Spence, who would win Errol at this Spence. point? Errol Spence most definitely. Because Errol Spence way better than Jeff Horn. And Pacquiao, Jeff Horn was a closer fight. I think Earl Spence. What about Terrence Crawford if he moved to 47 to fight Pacquiao? Definitely Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford all day. What about um, Kell Brook? Kell Brook. I'm not really, I haven't really been watching Kell Brook like that. I saw the fight with him and Earl Spence, but rather than that, I, I ain't really. What about Danny Garcia if he would have fought? Fight. That'd be a good fight. Toss up to me. Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman all day. Yeah, Keith Thurman. I want to say, I think that. Um, I would agree with everything he says with the Pacquiao that showed up against Jeff Horn. Because like I said, I really don't believe Pacquiao is over the hill. I just think he didn't, I think he's not really motivated and I think he didn't, I think he way overlooked Jeff Horn. You know, because he didn't realize Jeff Horn was going to come so hard. And I don't think he was in the best shape he could have been in. You saw him get real tired. Like, yeah, he did get tired. Used, normally Pacquiao always had like endless stamina. You know what I mean? It was like his stamina. Him and Floyd had the best stamina. You know what I mean? They could go round after round after round. He looked really gassed after that. He hurt him in round nine. And in round 10, he looked kind of mm -hmm. spent a little bit. So I think that, um, again, he would have lost to all those guys on that night. But a motivated Pacquiao, maybe. You know what I mean? I think that Terrence Crawford would be a great fight. I think Errol Spence is like a big guy. I think Pacquiao's past the point where he can fight like real naturally strong big guys like that. Maybe even Keith Thurman, but like the Pacquiao that fought even Bradley the last time, I think that he looked real good in that fight. You know, I think he looked sharp, fast. I remember thinking, man, he still got it, you know, when he fought Bradley and uh, beat him just as bad as he's always beaten him, even through, before he fought Mayweather, you know. So that Pacquiao. I wish we could see him fight Terrence Crawford. They've been Crawford. doing Pacquiao bogeys. Hmm? They've been doing Pacquiao bad. <laughs> yeah, that's the now, first Bradley fight. Forget about do you guys that. know much about Terrence Crawford's next opponent? He's the only other guy at 140 with belts, Julius Ndongo. I don't know, I don't too, know crazy too much, much about, about him. I don't know too crazy much about him, but I just heard that he's just got the other belts. But the way the HBO guys were talking about it is like Terrence probably most likely going to. Do you see Terrence Crawford losing at 140? No. Nah. I feel like he, he's he good at Boxing, you gotta keep in the perfect amount of distance for him. You know, real, he's a smart fighter. He make adjustments. And he got the will and he got the skill. So, so let's say he beats Julius Ndongo in August on ESPN. He becomes undisputed and moves up to 147. If you're a matchmaker, what, what's the number one fight you would like to see him fight? What, what welterweight would you like to see Terrence Crawford fight? If he, Earl if he, yeah. what so about Spence, you? I don't even know who win that fight. I think Thurman would be a good fight, too. I what do you think, Joey? I just love to see him fight uh, Errol Spence. You know, pit bull, two pit bulls fight. You know what I mean? It'd be like, that'd be a dog war. You know what I mean? They'd really, um, I think they'd bring it in that fight. You know, people's, I think Errol Spence is naturally bigger, but also, at the same time, if you ever have talked to um, Terrence Crawford when he's walking around, He's a naturally big guy. Like he gets way up. You know what I mean? Just yeah, he is muscle, a frame. Just muscle frame. You know what I mean? Like he 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 gets up there. You know, so people don't realize he loses a lot of weight to get down. You know what I mean? So yeah, uh, in the Gamboa fight that was at 35, he rehydrated to like 155, 158. Exactly. So, so um, I think Spence is a little bit naturally bigger, but I think that the boxing skill Terence Crawford has, like I think that it brings him just up a little bit and. I think they meet in the middle, and I think it'd be a great fight. That's yeah. definitely a great fight. I think Terrence would win that fight. Which one? Errol Spence? Yeah. 
because he he's got a good enough defense. It doesn't. He could switch. He could switch to southpaw and avoid uh, Spence left hand, or he could stay right handed and do something he really does good. Is just catch the uh, left hand and come back with his own stuff. Now, why do you want to see Keith Thurman versus versus Terence Crawford? Because Crawford would win that fight, I think, easy. Like, versus Keith Thurman? Yeah. I, like, just like he's won all of his fights, it's easy. That's why. Definitely good stuff to look he, forward to. I think he would confuse Thurman and switch him back and forth. Hit he would because he's got power too, so he would he could hit him, and then all of a sudden he'd switch and him again, and then switch. Now you're ambidextrous like Terence Crawford, where you can fight southpaw or orthodox. Yeah, switch in the middle and all that. Yeah. You switch in the middle too. Mm -hmm. What are you right-handed or left-handed mostly? Like when you write and stuff. What do you eat right, with? Right, right-handed. But you feel comfortable left? Yeah. How do your opponents react to it when you switch out of nowhere? They try to hit me, but I'm all over here, over here. I say it's Never a right in the middle. Thing. Yeah. It's a big surprise. Yeah. Okay. I'll hit them and I'll get an angle. And I'm stronger southpaw, so I really work on the body shots. And then I switch again, come back to the head right handed, and then go back southpaw. So that, that really works. My question to you is, how, how in the fight, at what point, how do you know when to switch? Like, say you, you came out orthodox, how do you know when it's time to switch southpaw? I usually just switch. <laughs> you just do it? He yeah, just do it when you want? I don't switch in bad position. It's either. not conventional. He don't switch, switch him. You just do it position. whenever? Yeah, it's just. Even yeah, if you're not, like, even if you, you don't have to be getting tagged or anything, you'll just do it? Yeah, I, I'll be throwing punches all of a sudden. I, my feet rearrange themselves. Oh, you do it in the middle of like combo? Punch, yeah, he throws look, it look good. It look good though. What? He's boom, boom, they switch. Uh, okay, I didn't know you were doing it like that. Yeah, I nah, you, so you don't like reset? It? Nah, nah, he throwing punches, boom. It's slick. It's slick. Really? Where did you pick that up? You just, that's, you've always done that? Yeah, all of a sudden it happened. And people can't really like, because. That is hard to. He'll be at, he'll be at orthodox and then if he wants to get a body shot, to he'll switch and it'll totally open up the body shot. Hit the oh, body wow. shot, turn back, hit the right hand. Yeah. And it looks good. Are you a superhero, Miguel? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's, that's you got to keep that up. Keep people off. They don't know what to do. That's the thing is I don't like, because normally when you, when a kid like him comes up underneath, you know, like me and him, you know, or a certain gym or this gym, then he'll kind of develop a style like them. If you see two brothers, you're like, man, you know, we've been together forever, training together, you know, since we started. So if you see two brothers, you're like, yeah, they look the same because the younger brother looks like the older brother. This dude, you know, he does some things that he's picked up and stuff like that. But for the most part, he's completely different. He's like... That's that you know, Flintstone. A total, but he doesn't box like you. Like he's got That's a style. That Flint <laughs> Where were you born? I was born in Flint. Oh, you were born in Flint too. Yeah. Uh, it's that Flint. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. I think it's something in that water. What about this is weird. Oh, let's okay. let's something say that water he's at. <laughs> Just something that water. Broner Garcia winner versus Terrence Crawford. Yeah. Um, Terrence Crawford. Uh, Terrence Crawford. Uh, uh, Mikey Garcia, I think Mikey Garcia gave Terrence Crawford. He thinks Mikey Garcia is a superhero. I know, I feel like he beat, you know he beat him in the amateurs though. He's one of who who beat who? Terrence Crawford beat Mikey in the amateur. Oh, I don't know, but that's, that's amateur though. It's no, yeah, it's a different system. You know, and then uh, I think Robert Garcia said he ran or something. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's, that's, what, he, that's, that's, that's what he said. Excuse. That's that's an excuse. I feel like in boxing there is people that run, but you can't say like Laura Canelo. You can't say Laura ran. He boxed and he looked good doing it. You know. It's just a different style of fighting, and uh, but the f winner, I think Garcia will give trouble to Terrence Crawford for sure. But that's a toss-up for me. What do you think, Mikel? Nobody beating Crawford? Nobody beating Crawford, honestly, except for except for Errol Spence. I mean, yeah, Errol Spence. Maybe somebody bigger at forty-seven. Yeah. I'm not somebody saying he can beat. Real, I'm saying he will knock out Powell. Other than that, I don't think he's just gonna outbox him.